Let's talk about gravity that you are all familiar with, which is when you're standing on the surface of the Earth, which you will likely do for most of your life. <laughs> all right, you'll certainly go up in airplanes and you probably go down in caves, but for most of your life, you're going to be standing on the surface of the Earth. Unless, you know, commercial space travel takes off and you guys can afford the $100,000 ticket on uh, the spaceships, you know, and you can go up in outer space. I think that would be pretty cool. Hopefully those prices will come down a little bit. Do they have like a Expedia for space travel? <laughs> they should. What is the force on us? Well, we're clearly at the radius of the Earth. The Earth is roughly a sphere. It's not really a sphere, okay? It's a little bit bulged out in the center because it's spinning. The equator sort of <coughs> bulges out a little bit. The poles shrunk in a little bit. So it's not really round, but it's close-ish to round. We know that there is a force on us because there is this big mass underneath us, the mass of the Earth, which is pulling us towards the center of the Earth. Let's calculate what that force is. What we just said was the force is G m1, m2 over r squared. The negative sign indicates it's going down towards the center of the Earth. It's attractive force. And now we can punch in some of these numbers. Mass of the Earth there. The mass of us right there. The radius of the Earth squared right there. Okay. Let's rewrite this slightly and let's put G M E R E squared. Put all that stuff second. And now let's punch in some of these numbers. So what do we have for these numbers? Does anybody know what the mass of the Earth is? These are all SI units. Anybody know what the mass of the Earth is? Hey, what do you do when you're trying to figure out something these days, right? You pull out your phone and you immediately Google, what's the mass of the Earth? Okay, why don't you do that right now and tell me what you find? Okay, literally, pull out your phone and try it. I know they told you to turn your phone off, but I'm telling you to turn it back on and try it. Figure out the mass of the Earth and the radius of the Earth. Five point nine times ten to the twenty fourth kilogram. Five point nine times ten to the twenty four kilograms. Okay. Is that a reputable source that you're getting that number from? It's the first thing that popped up from Google. Okay. Yeah, it's probably fairly reputable. If anybody else gets a different number, let me know. What about the radius of the Earth? Six thousand three hundred and seventy-eight point one kilometers. Okay. Is that right? Andy, did I write that down right? Six point three seven times ten to the six? Yeah. Okay. And we said that the units on G, of course, were Newton meter squared per kilogram squared. Okay. So we take all those numbers and we punch them in here. Why don't you guys try that in your calculator and tell me what you get. And I will tell you what I get if I just approximate it in my head. I'm going to say it is 9.8 meters per second squared. I, of course, cheated because I knew the answer. But double check and make sure that if you punch in all those numbers, you get 9.8 meters per second squared. What we know is that force has to be equal to mass times acceleration. And so the acceleration due to gravity at the Earth's 
surface is negative 9.8 meters per second squared, which is what we call negative G. That's where that 9.8 comes from, right? We've been hearing about 9.8 meters per second squared over and over and over. Where does it come from? It comes from Newton's universal law of gravitation if you put in the mass of the Earth and you put in the radius of the Earth into this equation. You put those numbers in here, you get negative g, which I think is kind of cool, right? Kind of ties it all back together. Thank you.